Hey everyone, welcome to another very exciting Unity VFX tutorial. And today we're going to be working on recreating this sparks effect that you see here on the screen. So this one's actually pretty simple. It's really only got one component. And what I've just done is I've duplicated it, right? And I've just moved it around the world. So for example, if I duplicate it again, uh, you can do the same thing for the final effect when you want to place it in your game. You can just rotate it a little bit, place it anywhere, and you know, there it goes shooting off. There's also some lights here that are emitting from some of the particles when they approach the ground plane, but that's about it. And you can see they're emitting semi-regularly. So without any further delay, let's get started. So right now I've got the base effect, right, that I duplicated while I was in play mode. The first thing obviously we wanted, we're going to want to do is create a new particle system, okay? Uh, we're going to leave it as a cone. That's the default uh, emitting shape. And... We're just gonna let's let's make the radius really small so it's emitting from a single point next we'll rotate this so we'll reset this cone ends up looking like this we're gonna rotate it a little bit to the side and maybe point it upwards somewhat like this 45 degrees maybe okay so it kind of looks like you know it's coming from one side but you could just as well make it face uh, completely upwards on y okay let's move it to the side a little bit just so we're going to be able to preview it easier okay so for this for this tutorial you can actually just continue using the default particle system if you want i'm going to be changing it up a little bit but let's uh let's give it a different rendering mode let's put it on stretch billboard so you can see how this might end up being all uh, sparky looking turn the size down right let's turn the gravity modifier up to one so it's going to be whatever the gravity is in the physics setting so that's multiplied by this value here. And we want to enable collision with the world. Okay, so you can see now it's sort of looking like uh, like what sparks might look like. Okay, let's turn this down a bit more. Turn this to an orangish, yellowish color. Next, we want to maybe increase the speed at width with which it's emitting and turn the lifetime down. So let's turn the lifetime down to about 2. And... Turn the speed up, and you can see this is what you get. So for now, let's turn the emission up to 100, just so we can keep previewing this effect better, okay? So you can see how that might look like sparks. I'm just going to modify the color a little bit as well. Okay. So the this is beginning to look like sparks already. That wasn't very hard. Obviously, there's still some tweaking left to do. So for the length scale, this is the base length scale that you get, right? So if I put it at 8, uh, it's much longer. And if I put it at 1, it's just whatever the default particle looks like. So in this case, we're going to start with a length scale of 1. And so you can just modify that if you were just using the default particle texture. In my case, I'm going to use textures from my Ultimate VFX Particle Pack to speed things up. I'm going to be using the additive texture with a soft particle value of 3. It's just a capsule. It's very easy to make. You can just look at the texture right now. And so you can see what that looks like. Now I'm going to modify the speed scale. So what this means is that depending on the speed, it's going to scale it it's going to stretch it out a bit more. It's going to stretch it less, depending on the speed, right? So if it was, if it didn't really have any speed, it would just face the way, but otherwise the length would remain one, and now it's being stretched a bit more. So in this case, let's leave it at that. Uh, let's make this random between two constants, maybe 0 0.25 and 0 0.05 or something. And I'm going to randomize the start speed to be between maybe 5 and 8. Okay, so you can see now we've got our sparks going on. Let me just quickly check what the original values were, right? So there's 5 and 10 here, and start lifetime is also randomized on the original system, so let's do that as well. So let's give it a start lifetime between 1 and 2, and a start speed up between 5 and 10. Okay, so now it's I think it, these sparks are bouncing way too much. So let's turn down the bounce to maybe 0.5. And turn the dampen on to 0.5 as well. And so that's going to slow down the particles when they hit the, the ground a little bit. And leave the lifetime loss and everything else alone. What else is there? Uh, we have some color over lifetime changes. Cone, radius. Okay, so let's go back to this and modify the cone to be have a very a sharper angle. Right, a more enclosed angle. So we have our sparks going off. Next thing what we might want to do is enable the color over lifetime module. Now the color over lifetime module, right now we have a base color, a start color of this, this yellowish light orange. If we make it a little bit redder at the end, 
what's going to happen is it's going to multiply this color with whatever's already there. So when it multiplies white or tints it with white here, it's just going to remain yellow and then it's going to get more orange as it approaches the end. So maybe around 50%, I'm going to also make it white because I only want it becoming uh, more reddish near the end as the particle dies. Okay, so that looks better. Next, I'm going to turn the alpha down on both of these ends to zero. Okay, let me just replay that so it simulates faster. Uh, down to zero, and then right here somewhere early on, maybe at 10%, I'm going to turn the alpha up. So it quickly fades in, and then somewhere near the end, maybe at around 80, let's say, around there it starts fading out. Okay, that's looking good. Next, I'm going to just quickly look at the size again. 0 0.025, that's fine. Lifetime. Okay, so speed scale needs to be modified, I think is way too much. That looks better. Now for this, uh, this is fine if I wanted a constant spark system. So you could leave it there if that's what you're going for. But in my case, I want it to be kind of just kind of turning on and off, almost it was like flickering or damaged uh, machinery or something. So to do that, let's turn the rate over lifetime to zero. Maybe put in about four of these, okay? So this is going to say at whenever the timer, the duration of this entire system, it's looping, is five seconds. Every time it hits zero, right, every time it hits uh, 60, I think, yep, yeah, so 60, and the next one would be at 65, uh, it's going to emit 30, 30, 30, these many particles. What we want to do is change this up a little bit. So in my original example, I had 0, 2, 2.25, and 3. So here we'll do the same thing. So we have 0, 2, 2.25, and 3. And I'm going to emit anywhere from 10 to 50 particles. All right. So let's just set 50 for all of these, and I'm just going to copy this, Control-C, and then Control-V on these. So I get anywhere from 10 to 50 particles every time the timer reaches 0, 2, 2.25, and 3 within multiples here. So you can see this kind of looks like, you know, damaged machinery uh, flickering on and off. You could just as well attach a script to this and set, it, set up your own random emissions. I'm going to leave it at this. So this, this is the gist of the effect. You're done here. I'm going to keep going because there's some other things I want to do as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new light, a point light, okay? I'm going to leave all the values. I can reset this. It doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to call it light template. This is going to be my particle light template because I want some, as you saw in the original effect, when the particles got close to the ground plane, there were some lights there, right? So we want to take advantage of Unity 5.5's new lights emission module right here. So I turn it on. I drag this light here. I can make the ratio 0.25, which means about 25% of the particles that are emitted will actually have a light attached to them. So right now you're not seeing much, maybe just a little bit at the end there. So what ha needs to happen is I need to up the intensity, and now you can see them. And then my original, let's see what values I had going on there. For lights, I had 1.5 for the range. So we can multiply the range a bit more to 1.5 to get a similar effect to what I had before. So you get that, right? Again, this is fine. You can leave it off, but I, I want to take it a step further. I think we can make this particle system look a little bit better by taking advantage of the trails module. So in this case, I'll just turn the trails on. Without a material, you're going to see all this purple, you know, missing material stuff. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to assign a material for the trails module. Uh, yeah, for the trails in the renderer module. So I'm going to just type in trail. Again, I'm using my ultimate VFX particle pack. You can actually just continue using the default particle texture here with some tweaking. But I'm going to choose this... Um, Haze Trail Additive with a Soft Particle Value of 3. So now I have this. Again, it's pretty cool for tracer rounds, but that's not what I'm looking for. So in the Trails uh, module, the ratio is 1, which means every single particle is emitting a, a trail, which is exactly what I want. But the lifetime, I need to modify it to be much shorter, because I don't want the trails to be stretching all the way to a, um, throughout the particle's lifetime. So in this case, in the original, I had about a randomized lifetime between 0.02 and 0 0.05, and that's what I'm going to put here as well. So going back to this, in the trails module, I'm going to enable random between two constants. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, at 0 0.02 and 0 0.025, I believe. So it's just a bit longer. 
And I think these this just gives the particle a better, more curved look, right? So with with uh, stretch particles, um, I can just show you. You can see the particles are longer, but they don't actually curve properly. With trails, they get to do that. So that's why I enable the trails module. It may or may not be as efficient as you want it. Depends on your purpose. I'm going to turn this down, minimum vertex distance. And I'm going to modify some of these other values as well. So I want the width over the trail to be whatever the width of the particle is. But over lifetime, or over the trail rather, I want it to get smaller. right? So it's not much of a difference, but it's this little tweaking that adds up to give a better effect in total. Color over lifetime, I actually want it to be fading out. So I'm going to set this to a gradient. And over the lifetime, I'm going to set this to fade out like this. That's all. And same with the color over trail. I'm going to set this to a gradient. And near the end, I want it to get a little bit more reddish. So right now, you're not going to see much of a difference. But for example, if the lifetime was one, you could see the trail at the end is red, right? So there's a lot of potential here for tweaking and just making something really cool out of that. And I think that's it, actually. That's basically the effect, right? So if I go and hit play mode, you can see that's the particle effect that we created. There's nothing else playing. If I just duplicate this, right, start up the particle system, I can easily move this around, place it anywhere. Maybe there's some machinery or some busted pipes uh, that have sparks coming out of them. I can just as well randomize the start color to be between maybe the original yellow and something bluish, and you get, you know, this right here, which is neat. And I can otherwise make it maybe like orange to give it a little bit more detail. Again, you can go in and you can start tweaking away for maybe hours on end sometimes, which is why I avoid doing that in the tutorials, but that's about it. All right, everyone, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please consider leaving a comment and subscribing if you want to see more awesome content and videos like this, or if you'd like to leave a suggestion for future tutorials. Bye.